Paul, I'm not saying we're Nostradamus. I'm not okay. saying that. All right. But I believe it was last week we said, hey, if there's going to be changes at Microsoft, Ooh. we're going to find out. Oh, you're and talking about the Snover. I'm talking about the Snover. So for those who, before we dive in, aren't aware, Jeffrey Snover has announced that he is leaving the Microsoft uh, July 1st, which is effectively, probably means he's actually leaving like the 30th because that's the end of the fiscal year. Whatever. He yeah. is leaving, and this is, I mean, this is big. Like, Snover's been around since the bedrock was laid almost for Microsoft. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is, um, he's a missing piece of my programming window series. I've been meaning, I, I meant mm. to, and and will still, I'm going to fill in some gaps here and there, and one of them is PowerShell. Mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 in researching the series, I had come across my first meeting with Jeffrey Snover, but I had heard about PowerShell, which was then called Monad, Years earlier, uh, Mark Manassi and I were doing some kind of a, I think it was like a security road show, and we did a we did a show at um, at actually at the campus at the um, what do they call it the Enterprise Briefing Center, actually Executive Briefing Center or something, mm -hmm. and um, I don't remember the name of the guy, but I have the notes from that meeting as well, and they were talking about you know the point of you know the .dot net ness of it and object oriented and how they were going to do Unix shells one better, et cetera, et cetera. It was all, it was really interesting, but. Um, you know he's uh, he's the latest in a kind of a growing list of long term Microsoft. I was gonna say the I don't want to say the old guard, but like the people who well, built I mean, a lot of the foundation. Yeah, there's something to that. I mean, the number of guys who are left from like the late 1990s mm -hmm. <laughs> is dwindling. It's not just guys too. I mean, like Laura Butler had been yep. there for a long time, and these are people who were in many ways like Microsoft fellows or technical fellows or you know probably different terms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who were just basically had accomplished so much <laughs> that they were like, well, you make up your thing. I don't you know. Yeah, go do um, what you want. Yeah. So anyway, any, every time a, a unicorn like this disappears, you have to sort of ponder, you know, what's going on and what this means for the company. I mean, PowerShell, for example, is is excellent. I mean, I don't think anyone would argue with that. Although I I always kind of questioned whether typical rank and file system administrators could make this leap into what is sort of programming. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in the years since, Microsoft has embraced uh, Linux and, you know, Linux slash Unix, I guess Linux really, but open source. And, um, you know, PowerShell came up out of an era where Microsoft was very much still focused on beating Unix slash yep. Linux, you know. I think that was kind of the point, like just to look at all the um, the weirdness of Unix command lines and and uh, scripting, and make something that was object oriented and logical, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, well, that's interesting. I mean, it's you can't say like it's the end of an era that this is a it's a it's a vague mm -hmm. <laughs> time period, right? But we we are in the midst of a transition for sure. That we've been talking about for years, right? The one thing I really like about Snover is right up until his very last day, mm -hmm. <laughs> this man holds a <laughs> <the> grudge. <laughs> he talks wow. very if you look at his tweets and he even links to a video where he talks about what he was trying to build PowerShell, how Microsoft demoted him, put him in a corner and said, We don't yes. know what the hell you're doing, like what is going on? He's like, This is a very bad five years. And he even says it in his tweet, he's like, In my twenty two years here, eighteen were great. <laughs> like this yeah, 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 he doesn't want to well, let them I, forget. Yeah, to me, I appreciate the transparency and yeah. um, kind of the refreshing honesty of that. Uh, but, you know, there are people. Uh, there are people who kind of toiled behind the scenes. Like Gabe Ball was a guy who yep. we did had never heard of, and he came up when the Insider program started. You know, September thirtieth, mm -hmm. uh, two thousand fourteen, or whatever. It was the first time any I think most people outside of Microsoft had ever heard of him, and then he became very prominent publicly for a little while while he did that. But he had been at Microsoft for years, yep. like many years. Um, it's it's interesting. It's this is an interesting period. The Don boxes of the world have moved mm -hmm. on to Meta and other things like that. Um, all of this, it's it's awful. I mean, but in many ways, this is a dismantling of the. I would I would call it the. It's not really client, but we will call it the client side. I think Microsoft mm -hmm. would call it the on premises side of the house. Yeah, you know, we did a little webinar last week, and I was—I might have said out loud, or I was thinking to myself. Certainly, I mean, you can watch the progression with Windows Server, where they introduced something called Server Core, which has a reduced number of workloads. And now Windows Server is the reduced number of workloads. Mm -hmm. The the workloads are all up in the cloud in Azure. Um, and if you want an on-prem Windows 
server, your capabilities are, you know, and Microsoft will probably never technically get rid of it. I, uh, I joke that, uh, what did I say? I think it was like a feder federation, I think I said, or no, uh, directory services would probably be like the last workload standing. Someone else mm -hmm. suggested maybe it was certificate services or whatever, yeah. but uh, we're going to be, it's, you know, a couple of things. Federation services will always have to be a part of it because of Azure, but mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's not, it's just the world's changed, you know? Here, here's the other one, and I have no insider information about any of any, any of this. But the other one who, like, in my opinion, is, like, in that Snover class that hasn't said mm -hmm. anything is Rusinovich. Yep. Oh, like, for sure. Like, if he yep. comes out and he's like, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow, too, like, then, well, so, then you get a little nervous, but. I'd have to go, I don't, you know, Snover in recent years has done something completely unrelated to PowerShell, and I actually can't remember off the top of my head. He was working on uh, Office 365 stuff, like backend yeah, stuff for a while. Yeah, which is weird, right? Yeah. All right. So that, that, that seemed like strange to me. When Rosinovich left Windows because of Sanofsky, by the way, mm -hmm. and joined Azure, I at that time took that as a, a very deep loss and a very troubling sign of what was going on badly at Microsoft at the time, which was true, certainly in Windows. Um, but you could make the argument that Rosinovich, like, Microsoft has transitioned to the cloud. And I would say I, I have a hard time following him now because he talks, you know, he's a genius, right? I mean, yeah. He talks about things that I just don't understand and at a very deep level. And, uh, but I feel like he's like, he's like a lot of the windows server guys, Jason, um, Jason, um, um Xander, um, and probably others. Mm -hmm. You know, so guys drop off over time, right? I mean, this is this kind of naturally happens. But there are guys in the Azure org who were deeply involved with Windows slash Windows Server core development back in the day that are now involved with that in Azure. And I think those guys have a really obvious career track where it kind of it could make sense for them. I think it does for Rosinovich. Um, uh, Rosinovich, I, I don't – I wonder if – I wonder if him moving around was due to – the de-emphasis of Windows Server and PowerShell and... Maybe. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to yeah. talk to him sometime about that. He's a great guy. Oh, he's a super interesting great, person great to talk to. Yeah. He's a great public speaker, too. He's got... Yep. Oh, yeah. Tons of stuff published and... And actually, him and Rosinovich have a very public and purposeful rivalry about mm. public speaking, which I find to be very humorous. Uh, so you've got that. Oh, I got to find the tweet. I, I meant to pull this up prior to starting mm -hmm. this, because, Paul, I need... Ah, son of a... <laughs> I need to read this to you. This is triumphant in the worst possible way. Okay. I'm going to read a tweet from you from the Windows Dev account. Oh, you're just going to make me mad now. Yeah, I, I'm going to make everybody <laughs> mad. All right. Windows App SDK 1.1 introduced a suite of new features, including the ability to, to send Windows App notification, aka toast notifications, and push notifications to inform users when they are not currently using the app that's true <laughs> like what, here's a well, reminder okay, so to open this, us like this goes to the conversation i think we just had yesterday right about how or recently i don't remember i'm sorry but when microsoft yeah we talked about it yesterday because in windows 8 they moved to this win win rt mm -hmm. set of apis sdks whatever programming model app model and windows 10 continued that we now call that uwp actually we now call it the windows app sdk right but it, it kind of went, uh, it, it was Metro style apps, store apps, universal apps with a small U, universal Windows platform apps, UWP, and now it's Windows App SDK. So Windows App SDK did, was supposed to ship at 1.1, um, at was supposed to ship at build, and mm -hmm. they missed that date by about two weeks, I think. Um, and yes, that is one of the, <laughs> well, I think one of the other capabilities, if you think that's dumb, I believe. And I do think it's dumb, but yeah. But one of the other uh, capabilities is it supports multiple windows in an app. <laughs> I mean, this is this is kind of what I'm talking about, from from a from a mobile app perspective, right? Some of the new capabilities we see in the Windows App SDK 1.0 or 1.1 are um, uh, advances. <laughs> you know, I mean, multiple windows in an app sounds stupid. It's 2021 that we had this capability back in. Windows, I guess, 2.0 probably in mm -hmm. 1988 or something. Um, what are you talking about? But this is a mobile app platform, right? So these capabilities are actually, they make a little, you know, whatever. They're trying to transition it to be more of a desktop thing. So they're adding these capabilities. 
Um, but that's why I said in, in many ways, so as from an app developer perspective, uh, desktop app developer perspective, this thing is horribly immature. Yeah. And, uh, yes, <laughs> that's true. Notifications are right. Yeah, I know. Just a... I, I, I know. I know. Yep. So I, 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 I'm just gonna, I'm going to guess. I don't actually, I've never looked deeply into what that means, but this is my guess. Mobile apps, uh, often have services that run in the background and you can put them to sleep. The app will go to sleep automatically. The OS does that. But the the service, the certain services, background services can still run. The obvious examples like a mail app will be pulling for new messages mm -hmm. or can accept pushed emails or whatever it is. Um, okay. And they can do that in a very low power state. It's it's designed to be efficient, you know, blah, 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 whatever. This is something we accept on phones. You know, I don't, although the Apple <laughs> mail app is terrible at this, by the way. I use it with Gmail. I sometimes have to go into the app and manually refresh it. And it's like, oh, you have seven new emails, you know. But mm -hmm. technically, that th type of thing should work all the time. Um, the App SDK, Windows App SDK, sort of brings those technologies to a, a desktop. A desktop, I'm going to put quotes around that, but a desktop platform. So uh, desktop apps also can, you know, of course, can have background processes that could persist, and that's bad form. But I think this is bringing that more modern mobile app style notification system to what is technically a desktop app. So you could close it and still get those emails or whatever Maybe. types of notifications. I, I'm, that's, that's my, yeah. I'm just devil's advocating it. I, I don't know 100% for sure, but that is what it sounds like to me. I know it's ludicrous. Yeah. Either way, even if that is even, let's just be optimist and say, you're absolutely right. It will totally be abused by people. Either way. Yeah. Well, of course, that's what developers do. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that in like a snarky sense. I mean, of course, right. I, it, you give, you have a capability, of course. I mean, that's why, you know, to, well, not that it stopped, but I mean, until Windows 8, the, the only way that you could as a developer ensure that your app performed well or did the type of thing we just described was you launch a process at startup. It sits there in a the tray, maybe has a little icon with stupid options on it. And, um, you know, Apple used to infamously like preload stuff. Like, so if you installed iTunes, it would do like a preloader. Um, Adobe did, did, and I actually, I think still does. Uh, a lot of companies will do a little, um, because they have their own updating system, they'll mm -hmm. preload a, an updater that will check for updates, which is another great background process to think about. And you can go into your, you know, today it's in Task Manager, but you go into that list of startup apps and processes, and you can say, no, no, no. And, um, you know, your computer will boot up a little quicker, but maybe those individual apps won't perform as well or won't update or whatever. But, and, yeah, so this is the new version of that. Hopefully it's more efficient. You know, hopefully it doesn't uh, consume more resources, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, drain bad, you know, sit there and drain RAM over time or whatever all the nonsense was that these things were doing in the past. Maybe. Look at me defending Microsoft on a Tuesday. Feeling okay. <laughs>